Right, in today's session we're going to talk about clonidine. Um, clonidine is a drug more commonly associated with the intensive care unit rather than anesthesia, but it does have some adjuvant usages within anesthetics. We're going to have a little look at the presentation, we're going to have a look at the use of clonidine, the mechanism of action, and some of the effects clonidine has uh, systemically. We'll start off with presentation. Clonidine itself is available in tablets, it's available in transdermal patches, and it's available as a clear colourless solution for injection, typically found in 150 micrograms per ml ampules, which are then diluted up to um, satisfy whatever needs of the infusion you're having within your intensive care unit. One of the important things to note about clonidine is that it is 50% renally excreted, and therefore if you have a patient with renal failure or renal impairment, you have to be cautious with the use of clonidine to ensure that you don't um, overdose them on it and prolong the effects of clonidine long after the time you wish to stop using it. So moving on to the mechanisms of action, um, clonidine itself is a potent um, alpha adrenergic receptor stimulator. Now, classically and more so, it is a alpha-2 receptor uh, stimulant, but it does have some action against alpha-1 receptors. If we remind ourselves, the alpha-1 receptors predominantly are GQ-coupled um, uh, mechanisms of G-protein, um, whereas the alpha-2 receptors commonly are GI-coupled protein receptors, and these are associated with inhibition of um, adenyl cyclase, which leads to a reduction in the presence of cyclic AMP. Now, the alpha-2 receptors that uh, clonidine typically interacts with are found in the lateral reticulous, reticular nucleus, and they predominantly, when affected, lead to a decrease in central sympathetic outflow and sedation effects. They're also found in the spinal cord, and they augment the release of endogenous opiates within the circulation. So... When we're moving on from the mechanism of action of clonidine and we have a little think about the usage of it, we've mentioned before that the inhibition of the central sympathetic outflow leads to a sedative effect and this is ideal for patients who are ventilated on the intensive care unit. It can also be used in the treatment of hypertension because it has some of that uh, effects across the alpha-1 and alpha-2 receptors and it can also be used as an adjuvant in the withdrawal of opiate um, treatment, withdrawal of treatment of opiates. Um, it's also used, as mentioned earlier, in anaesthetics. It essentially can be used as an adjuvant analgesic with spinal and epidural anaesthesia with limited interactions with the respiratory drive or output. So the final thing to discuss is the effects of clonidine. If we think of the central nervous system, uh, as we've said, it leads to sedation and that's one of the most common uses of clonidine. It also has a profound effect on MAC. It can drop the MAC of uh, many volatiles by up to 50%. Um, on the central, uh, on the CVS system, as we said, initially can have a little bit of effect on alpha-1 receptors, which leads to hypertension, but then the predominant overriding effect is a, a hypotension. It can lead to prolonging of your PR interval, and it can also lead to uh, a momentary blockade of your AV node conduction pathways as well. Renally, just to mention, it can also lead to a reduction in the production of ADH. And as we've already said, um, you have to be cautious in clonidine with people who've got renal failure. 